Hi, in this video I'll talk to you about three hairdressers, actually two occasions, two hairdressers on three occasions, all right. Uh, the first one, who cuts your hair? All right, so long ago I had plenty of hair and my mother sent me to get a haircut. at the beauty salon which was it said unisex on the door and then uh, my stepdad explained to me that the hair person that cuts my hair was a he she now at 19 years old I didn't know what a he she was he and she it, it was really a man that cut hair but this man looked like a woman Perhaps this man took pills to grow breasts and took pills to, or not took pills, but had the surgery to cut off the penis and the testicles. But this man looked like a woman. And Monica was her name. Took, she, he took the... the, the personality of a woman the, the, she looked like a woman so my mother wanted me to go to the July 4th celebration with Jimmy Phipps who was in Texas and we were in Chicago and uh, he was celebrating the 4th of July and the Constitution and uh, he had a course at that time. What we would call him now is a patriot or a person that educates people about the United States Constitution and loves the United States. So, uh, yet you could make money by selling his course, So, which was about time. It was not about the U.S. Constitution. It, it was about time and the value of time. And I liked his course. Uh, it talked about biblical things without mentioning the word Bible. It talked about being honest, talked about standing up for what is right, uh, not wasting your time. It did mention God, though. Not the Bible, but it did mention God. It mentioned to what was it that it did? Well, the main thing about this was that it was a business 4th of July picnic, but there were going to be meetings about the business probably before or after the 4th of July. And what happened was my mother sent me to get a haircut and the hairdresser the he, she, Monica, cut my hair. So it looked very short, very short, very short. In fact, on the, the front here, it was standing up. And my mother called up Monica and said, I wanted him to have a business haircut. Why did you cut his hair like this? I don't know what Monica said. The next thing that happened was my girlfriend said, Daniel, who cut your hair? And I said, Monica. And then she said, that beauty salon right there? And I said, yes. Oh, Daniel. Daniel. Did you tell her that I'm your girlfriend? And I said, yes, I did. Oh, Daniel. Monica did this to your hair because she liked my older brother, Jesse, I think is his name. And, well, Jesse didn't like her. Well, again, Monica is not... Uh, 
she was not born a girl, okay? Daniel, she doesn't like my family. That's why she did this. So that's how a small town. Now, Chicago is a big town. However, we lived in the South Chicago area. And you did run into people twice or three times. Or on a daily basis. And so what happened was... Monica didn't like that I was going out with Leticia. So that's why she cut my hair. All right. Either before before that incident must have been I was there with my mother at Monica's unisex salon when a woman walked in or she was already she was already sitting there and Monica was cutting her hair, but Monica kept on pulling it. Mm. pulling it like this and pulling it like that as she was brushing the woman's hair and she would put more hairspray and so on the hair looked nice the haircut was nice but the Monica would pull her hair and when the customer paid and left she told uh, my mother I don't want that woman to come back here that's why I pulled her hair So I didn't like that about Monica. Uh, the next time, and then again, I was so naive that when she cut off my hair and had it standing up, I didn't know she was trying to insult me or, or insult my mother or I don't know what she was doing, or insult my girlfriend. So... The next time, who else cut my hair? In Miami, there was another lady that cut my hair. And I have a uh, something here on the skin, which is it's called a birthmark. And I told the hairdresser, I have this here. Be careful, please. You know? And then she went and hit me with the comb or something. I went, ow, ouch. And I told her, I just told you that I have this here. Please be careful. And she had one of these narcissistic, selfish things. What I should have done is walked out right then and there. If you have to pay, then you pay. And uh, if you have to call the cops, you call the cops. But you don't let her continue cutting your hair. But she did cut off the rest of my hair. I paid. And... I walked out and the Bible says I'm supposed to pray for her and what I was thinking about today was you know I could have slapped that girl but it never occurred to me to hurt somebody and to hit a girl no not for that reason I mean I had punched a girl when I was in sixth seventh sixth or seventh grade but she was trying to take my bicycle and there were two girls but the older one, the bigger one, didn't want to take my bicycle. But the smaller one wanted to take my bicycle away from me. Uh, she was probably bigger than me anyway. But I punched her in the mouth. And she didn't steal my bicycle. It was my brother's bicycle. Uh, it felt great to punch her. It really did. Uh, and I did the Hector punch. You've seen other videos of mine. Uh, Hector was a fat boy in sixth, well, not so fat in sixth grade, but I had heard about him. I had just moved into the school. And Mark was the bully, but Mark was skinny, and Hector began lifting weights. Now, I don't have this as a fact, but there's no way he got muscles by not doing anything. So, Mark was chasing Hector around the room, and Hector was running away and when Hector ran away he swung backwards without even looking and broke Mark's glasses and made Mark sit down and start crying Mark transferred out of the school before that the teacher had said why do you all follow Mark 
you're all like his little dogs. And this was very true. We already were a pack. Not myself, because I had just joined the school. And uh, there was one more incident that made Mark get out of school. He came with new sun gla new glasses that they were brand new at the time. They were round, and the um, inside the classroom they were clear. And as soon as he went to the lunchroom, which was outside, and into the next building, uh, they would turn into sunglasses. So he became even more cool, right, by having uh, those expensive $200 at the time sunglasses. Now they'd probably be $400. And so what happened next was, with his new glasses on, Mark began to punch Hector in the arm. Hector was against the wall. But Mark wasn't punching super hard. He was just doing it in front of everybody to say, I'm the boss here. And Hector just grabbed Mark in a headlock and the WWF the wrestling thing was very famous but Hector just moved back into the wall and hit Mark's head on the wall it did hurt we all heard the boom then my memory serves uh, I believe that was the last time I saw Mark he just didn't go back to that school what I liked about Mark is that he decided what he was going to do with his life. He decided to quit school or to transfer school or uh, his parents, for some reason, obeyed him. When I told my mother, I don't want to go to that De La Salle school that's all full of boys and no girls, my mother said, that's where you're going, and that was the end of this, the discussion. Uh, it was horrible going over there. It was a bus, a train, and a bus. Uh, and they didn't teach anything. Nowadays, I'm looking around for my son and, and my narcissistic daughter, selfish daughter. I'm looking around. It's better to be homeschooled and get something online and learn than to be going to a school where girls are being raped, uh, students are shooting each other, or they're choking out each other or hurting each other like that. Uh, it's not worth going to a, a high school or a middle school. So what happened next? Uh, back to the haircuts. Well, what am I talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the haircuts, I think. Well... So I didn't even think about punching the the hairdresser lady that cut my hair and hurt me here. And I was thinking at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock this morning, there were no cameras back then. I could have slapped her and ran out the door after I paid her. She was what I call now a narcissist, uh, a selfish person, a rude, a bad person. There was a doctor that when my neighbor cut his finger, uh, the doctor sewed it back together and the my neighbor went to another hospital because something was wrong with his finger and at the other hospital that the other doctor said who did this I have to cut off your finger now fortunately uh, the, the, the other doctor at the second hospital he decided to try to save it he said there is still grass because he had been cutting grass there is still grass on inside your finger and someone just sewed it back together leaving the grass in there 
So my friend Francisco said to me, why does the first doctor do his job if he doesn't do it with a good heart? He should not work as a doctor. Or he could work as a doctor but not doing uh, that type. He could do, perhaps he could like to teach or he would like, but he should get out of whatever exactly he's doing that if he's, if he's going to do it wrong. So now that I'm uh, studying with the Jehovah's Witnesses, there are good people, there are bad people, but we're all sinners and we do bad things sometimes. We ask that God forgives us. We already, I already know God forgave us, right? However, I do say, I repent. I say I'm sorry to God. You know, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I have, I have done so to my God, not to some priest anywhere. Forgive me. Uh, I now realize I did this, and this was bad. I did that, and that was bad. And uh, please forgive me. Then I feel better because, uh, uh, in my grandpa's book, he, he my grandpa was very serious. He would just say, "Don't do it. Don't do it one time. Don't do it two times. And if you did it already and you goofed up." Don't do it again. All right, he was very strict, very cold, very self-controlled. But at the same time, he was a narcissist. He used to sit there and not look at you. And then if you were looking at him, he had this face that said, How dare you look at me? It was very imperial. So people didn't ask him anything. Very well. If you have any problems, please read your Bible or contact me. If you you can fix your life if you memorize Bible verses.